Hi right, guys. This is an unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous. Imagine that another beautiful day here in paradise. Uh, the end of the road in the Point Lonesome Swamp in the Oasis of Freedom here on this lovely, it is a Wednesday, December 8th. I think we're heading up to 80 degrees today here in the Sunshine State. And uh, so here I am, guys, uh, surrounded by all of this beauty in this beautiful weather surrounded by all of this natural beauty sitting here with my little dog uh, not having to deal with one clueless fucking moron as far as i can see uh, and here i sit i guess for the next four months with my thumb up my ass wondering what in the fuck am I doing, going to do with my life for at least the next four months. And uh, so I'm sitting here just reflecting on my life. And so I'm just going to sit here and whine probably until this battery goes out since I have nothing else to do today. Well, I guess I have to go get these used Craigslist tires mounted on my gas sucking truck. That That is the biggest job I have to do at least for the next five days is go to the tire store and get some tires mounted on my truck. That's it. That is my one job assignment. So uh, that'll take about an hour out of the next five days. So otherwise, I have a lot of time on my hands. I've, I've done all that needs doing, pretty much, you, you know, to have all of my place cleaned up, ready to sell. I've spun my little web. I'm waiting for some guy from Detroit, Michigan, claims he wanted to buy this place to make his way down here. And meanwhile, th this is my life, sitting here, uh, at the end, sitting here alone, not counting my little dog, but you know, sitting here alone uh, at the end of a dirt road in the Point Lonesome Swamp, 50 feet or so from where a few weeks ago uh, my arch enemy Lulu uh, examined her life, put a damn 38 to her head, and blew her brains out. Uh, that was uh, obviously much to my delight she chose to do that. That was her comment on living here alone uh, at the end of a dirt road in the Point Lonesome Swamp. It was the uh, completely rational decision uh, to blow her fucking brains out than to simply wake up the next day and go through uh, whatever she was going through. You know, I, uh, I, I just had the great pleasure last night of, uh, you know, knocking down some tequila and taking one of these damn clonopins. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Clonopin or clonazepin. Anyway, uh, I went to bed at eight o'clock last night. I got completely fucked up on tequila and clonopins. And uh, I went to bed at eight o'clock last night, woke up at nine o'clock this morning. Uh, 13 hours of blessed unconsciousness. I didn't even go through my, you know, on those damn clonopins, uh, I, I don't spend three hours, uh, you know, between like four in the morning and seven o'clock in the morning, tossing and turning, thinking about how fucked I am. 
so I really uh, took a, a you know took a night of tossing and turning uh, and about thinking about how fucked I am and just started thinking about it you know when I woke up this morning uh, just looking around uh, at, at this beautiful place on this beautiful day uh, realizing I, I have nothing to fuck to do with my life for at least four months. No plans. <clears throat> you know, so, uh, of course, I, I started thinking about, I was, uh, I've mentioned this thing called the secret life of birthdays, this uh, kind of astrology book that, you know, you can look up your birthday and the secret life of birthdays uh, and for each day of the year, you know, one of the things it has is, is like a health warning. So I was born on September 22nd, so the warning for my, usually it's things like, you know, what to eat and exercise, and, you know, talking about physical health, but for September 22nd, people, my little uh, health my guiding principle for my health is to beware the depressive effects of isolation. And that uh, you need to go get that swirly. Uh, my number one danger to my health is putting myself in isolated situations and getting depressed that uh, believe it or not September 22nd people were actually very social and uh, you know uh, unbelievably enjoy the company of our fellow humans so what have I done with the uh, w with the message from the universe to beware the depressive effects of isolation I have managed to put myself at the very end of a dirt road literally in the point lonesome swamp uh, 50 feet away from uh, someone uh, who got so depressed here she blew her fucking brains out to put herself out of her misery that is uh, that, that that's what uh, I, I, have, I have managed to do and uh, so here I sit uh, once again uh, talking to my imaginary little friends on YouTube for whatever reason uh, to keep me I guess from eating this whole fucking bottle of clonopins and everything else and Wellbutrin and whatever else uh, I'm gonna sit here and uh, just chew the fat with my little uh, fellow depressed collapsitarians on YouTube and uh, so I'm, there's nothing original here I've I've mentioned all of this uh, I know that I've mentioned this story many times about my mama you know my mother uh, it was pretty much, well, she was born in Georgia, but she moved to Florida when she was six. She considered herself a Floridian. And all through my childhood, you know, we came down here to visit Florida, and my mother absolute, this property right here was my mother's dream property, that she had this dream that, uh, you know, after her, I, I guess her kids, meaning me being the youngest, were up and gone, that her big dream was to move down here to the old Florida that she recalls buying a place almost exactly like this one and, and starting what she called a fish camp. Uh, that what she wanted to do, basically a hip camp, she wanted to find a little piece uh, of old Florida and, and, and have a couple of cabins and a little campground and uh, 
sell bait or whatever and live out her life uh, on, a pl on a piece of real estate exactly like this in her beloved Florida uh, doing that, but of course it never happened. You know, she got married, uh, she had five kids, and uh, moved to Atlanta, Georgia, built uh, a house in 1956, which is the very house she died in in 1997. 41 years, uh, that woman lived uh, in a town she had no interest in living in, which was Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, she was never happy there. Uh, every chance she got, we came down here. This is where we, at least one vacation, and frequently two vacations in the summer and Christmas, we would, we would come down here. Every chance she got, she would come back down here to the old Florida uh, that she loved to get the fuck away uh, from the hellhole of Atlanta, Georgia. And then she would go back and, uh, you know, continue living in a place uh, that did not make her happy, uh, did not fulfill her, and, and yet she kept returning to it. And, uh, you know, the older she got, so, uh, you know, I was in full support of her Florida fish camp dream. You know, so once I was up and, and out of the house, you know, it's like, Mom, what, what the fuck? Whatever happened to the dream uh, of moving to Florida and opening the fish camp? And her response... Uh, you know, as she was, well, when, let's say, when I was 18, she was in her mid-50s. Uh, bored shit, she was a shrink is what she was. Clearly bored shitless, listening to people bitch and moan and whine all day. Uh, that's what she spent her life doing, w w was listening to people bitch and moan and whine about how miserable uh, th their fucking lives were. What, what, a, what a fucking life. And her answer to me whenever this came up was, uh, Hambone, it is not where you are, it is who your with. It is the company you keep, the people you have around you, uh, the, the, you know, the, the family and social interactions uh, that you forge, the human bonds you make with uh, with, with your fellow human is more important than, <clears throat> a, 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 you know, living in a beautiful place with beautiful weather. Now, obviously, she would have preferred to have raised her family and, and, and forged friendships uh, down here in, in the place she loved, but it just it, this, that's just not how life worked. And so then she ends up with five kids and three grandkids and all her friends, uh, you know, living in Atlanta, Georgia. And as much as she didn't give a fuck about living in Atlanta, Georgia, and, and, and had this impossible dream uh, of moving to Florida, she could not break, you know, her bonds with other people. And she tried to, you know, drill this into my head. Uh, my mama was a very wise woman. And uh, saying that, you know, basically beware the depressive effects of isolation. Uh, the number one fucking way to get depressed is to put yourself out at the end of a fucking dirt road uh, in some place called the Point Lonesome Swamp. 
<clears throat> and you will uh, be alone, lonely, and depressed. Obviously, her words did not rub off on me. And, uh... So anyway, for whatever reason, <coughs> I did not take <coughs> my mama's advice. So here I sit, suffering the depressive effects of isolation. <coughs> Sitting here talking to my little imaginary friends on YouTube. This is my fucking life, uh, you know, getting, you know, going through my routine uh, of getting up every morning, having my little planet saving cup of organic coffee, blah, 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 and then, you know, opening up my little box uh, and, and, and getting in and, you know, plugging in my uh, confirmation bias. And, uh, you know, first checking in to see what all of my little imaginary friends have sent to share with me and going on the mainstream and the alternative media with my uh, figuratively or real, you know, with my bullshit detected button in one hand and my no shit Sherlock button in the other. And I start off every day uh spending anywhere from one to three hours d d just uh, looking at the news of, of the rest of the planet and uh, to confirm my pre-existing bias. Now everybody uh, believes their pre-existing bias, my pre-existing bias, being that we are fucked. So I go down the list, anything that crosses my radar, that concern, that confirms my bias that we are fucked, that conforms to my pre-existing uh, notions of reality, that conforms to them, and uh, and confirms my bias that we're fucked. I hit the no shit Sherlock button, and anything uh, that anybody sends me, or more likely that I find in the mainstream media that conflicts with my bias, uh, I hit the bullshit detected button. There is, I have no more interest in reading uh, this hopium-soaked, apocaloptimistic fucking crap uh, about the fucking Green New Deal and all the rest of it uh, than, than any, uh, any of these apocaloptimists um, have reading the stuff that confirms my bias that we are so fucked. I just was over there on uh, Collapse Chronicles. I just wrapped up today's Chronicle. I really encourage you to go over there and listen to the latest essay written by my hero, Professor William Reese. Uh, just spelling out a hopium free analysis of all of the reasons we are fucked. So uh, I got to confirm my bias that we are fucked and there's not a fucking thing we're going to do about it. So I have confirmed my bias for the day and you know it was printed in this outfit called Population Matters. This, and, 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 you know, fully well that not one goddamn person uh, who's not already a member of the choir, nobody uh, except the tiny few of us on the planet who understand that overpopulation uh, is the number one 
uh, uh, is the number one uh, problem on the planet. Overshoot is the existential threat to this planet. Uh, not one single human being who does not already understand this is going to have any interest in, in, in looking at anything from population matters. I, I assure you uh, that William Re population ecologist William Reese's a uh, spot-on analysis uh, of the state of this planet and how fucked it is uh, is nowhere going to be on the mainstream media yet how many stories uh, how many people covered the story yesterday from Elon Musk uh, you, you know the father of six billionaire uh, claiming that we need more humans on this planet that according to Elon Musk the number one thing biggest thing wrong with this planet is we have not stuffed enough humans onto it that 8 billion people is not enough humanity to save this but we need every one out there we need to go out there and have six children he said he is leading by example <clears throat> by having six children encouraging every couple on this planet to have six children that is the story that that is getting coverage and there are a hell of a lot more people on this planet uh, agreeing with uh, with Elon Musk that uh, this planet needs more people than agreeing with William Reese that too fucking many people is the reason that humanity and the planet are fucked. Anyway, you can go li listen to that. Uh, chronicle of the collapse so so that's what I do it, 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 is I just like it, so many I, I mean for the few of us that even turn tune into the news at all and, and I wonder how many what percentage of the planet actually even tunes into the news okay to with their uh, bullshit detected and their no shit Sherlock buttons my, my guess is is if five percent of this planet pays one minute of attention to what goes on outside their teeny weeny useless pointless existences uh, I, I, I would be shocked and for the tiny few of us who do we go on to the news sources that confirm our biases and, and and now with the internet it makes no difference how outrageous your your belief systems are you can find on a planet of eight billion people you can find <clears throat> plenty of people uh, to confirm your bias there's probably more people out there uh, writing essays uh, supporting uh, Elon Musk's belief that there are not enough humans on this planet than there are supporting uh, uh, <coughs> William Reese's position that there are too many people on the planet. Uh, anything you, any fucking bias you want to confirm, you can find it out there. Uh, on, on the internet uh, so my guess is for the tiny few people who even bother to do that they spend somewhere between 5 and 20 minutes going down uh, you know paying any headline they see that confirms their bias 
they say, see, I told you so, and any headline uh, that doesn't confirm their bias, they hit the bullshit detected button and talk about all the clueless fucking morons on the planet. Then they get up and they go about whatever they fucking do with their lives. And, and this is always gets back to the fundamental thing I do not understand about my fellow humans, and that is what in the fuck do people do with their fucking lives? You know, I mean, just the, so the two houses I can barely, well, the house, the, uh, of course, this house, uh, what she did with her life is put a bullet through her fucking head and end it. Okay, so I've got that house, so that house beyond her, who this is, uh, is a retired school teacher. Uh, so I guess on one level this woman is somewhat educated uh, in, I, I have owned this place for two years, I have literally had two conversations with this woman, each one lasting about five minutes. She has, this is a woman lives there by herself. She, uh, my guess is her house is maybe 2,000 square feet. I'm guessing a three bedroom, two bath, 2,000 square foot home. She has a monster truck and a Harley. A monster truck and a Harley Davidson motorcycle, I never hear a peep out of her. As far as I can tell, she spends virtually 100% of her life inside her house. Uh, I have never seen her have a guest come and visit. As far as I know, she has never had one visitor uh, here in the Point Lonesome Swamp, at least in the two years since I've been here. I have no fucking clue. She's retired. Uh, what the woman does with her life. It is a complete, total mystery to me. And then across the street from her is the couple that sold me this property. And they're in a similar situation, except there's two of them. They are a retired couple. <clears throat> they might have had something to do with running a septic uh, tank business. Not even sure about that. Uh, we're all three roughly in the, I'd say we're all three in our 60s. So this is a man and a woman. Again, you never hear a peep out of them. I have no clue if they have children or whatever. As far as I know, in the two years I have lived here, they have never one time had company come visit. I did notice on Thanksgiving that the woman here by herself and the couple here that all of their vehicles were in the driveway and no other vehicles. So my guess is that on Thanksgiving this woman in this house was sitting there alone having Thanksgiving dinner alone in the Point Lonesome Swamp and the couple across the street from her, the two of them were sitting there having uh, Thanksgiving by themselves in, uh, in, in their house. Uh, I, I, have z I know absolutely nothing about these people. They have never asked me one question about my own life except when are you going to tear those illegal buildings down off your property Sam one of them is uh, one or both of them are we're, we're pretty sure who ratted us out and shut down the hip camp that it was so important to them that what I was doing back here running this hip camp 
that uh, they called the county and snitched out the hip camp and uh, shut us down. And uh, I don't know which one it was, why they gave a fuck that we were having a hip camp back here. So those are my neighbors. So it is population four back here. Now that Lulu is dead and her two, well, her two children had been taken away from her when she was declared an unfit mother about three months before she put the bullet through her head. So I guess it's the four of us back here at the end of the road. Of course, I'm at the very end of the road. So that's my, my life is I, you know, I spend confirming my biases each morning. I preach to the choir. I do my little chronicle of the collapse uh, to the tiny few people who want to listen to one fucking word about the single biggest story in the history of humanity. And then, usually by about 11 o'clock in the morning, which is what it is about now, I'm guessing, about 11 o'clock, uh, I'm sitting here with my thumb up my ass, uh, having nothing to do. You know, I, I was actually thinking of, about looking for a job just for something to do, but uh, if you saw my little trip uh, to go pick up these tires yesterday, if, if you got a little glimpse of what it looks like if I do <clears throat> get out of the Point Lonesome Swamp and go and join humanity, that's what it looks like right out of here. So I was actually trying to convince myself that I was going to get a job driving up and down the roads of Florida, you know, delivering this planet-eating shit, thinking that would just fill up my days. So uh, I guess what, in about six and a half hours, I get to uh, have my sundown margarita by myself and then it's getting back on Netflix where they actually have started the next season of Tiger King which is could turn into a whole nother rant. I have actually watched the first three episodes of the second season of Tiger King, uh, which truly is the biggest collection of clueless fucking moron, reprehensible characters that I have ever envisioned. Uh, I mean, every single character on that show it, 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 it is is beyond a clueless moron. Uh, they have no redeeming characters. There is no protagonist. Every single person on Tiger King, from one end of the spectrum to the next, it, it, it is, is a completely useless breeder. They are, every single one of them reminds me of, of a member of the Snopes family, if you don't know who these Snopeses are. There, it, it's the biggest collection of useless eating, clueless fucking morons. Every single one of them uh, need to put a fucking bullet through their fucking head. Uh, as one of the characters mentioned, what did he say? Uh, all big, big cat people are all useless fucks. Big cat people are all useless fucks. There is not one character anywhere on, on, on that entire series 
uh, that, that you would want to have anything to do with. And this is what uh, I, I waste my own puny little worthless feudal existence sitting around waiting to die and waiting for the planet to collapse watching Tiger King and getting fucked up on tequila and clonopin and thanking God when I drift off to sleep and uh, 13 hours with us it was a damn good start with my my one and only hope left in my puny little life is that I will go to fucking sleep tonight and never wake up again. So now that I've come to the end of this wine, uh, here I sit alone at the uh, end of the road in the Point Lonesome Swamp, uh, suffering the depressive effects of isolation, wishing I was fucking dead, and uh, getting ready to go to some goddamn grease monkey to put these fucking tires on this gas sucking truck which will fill about up about an hour of my pointless useless existence i highly suggest you get out there and think of some creative way to fill up your own teeny weeny pointless useless existence known as your life. Bye guys.